uh, cell membrane maintains homeostasis and you can see right here it's a wonderful structure we have in our cells uh, let's take a look at it things to remember remember these things it's also called the semi permeable membrane it controls what goes in and out to maintain balance um, homeostasis equilibrium they all mean the same thing it has two types of transport you're gonna hear about passive and active passive no energy active uses energy it's found in all cells prokaryotic or eukaryotic so every cell has to have a cell membrane and it's also called the plasma membrane going back up here semi-permeable just means that it that some things can go in but not all things some things are blocked and it's made up of the phospholipid bilayer which acts as a barrier um, there's some carrier proteins to help some uh, things go in and out and carbohydrates and cholesterol and again, don't forget that molecules move in and out of cells by diffusion, um, which is passive transport. That means from high concentration to low concentration. Let's look at the function here. We see this image, and it basically shows that it allows some things to go in, but not others. So you want to control what goes in. You don't want too much to go in or too little. Too much goes in, the cell can burst. Um, this is what you want, normal balance. Um, too little goes in then the cell shrivels. Um, another idea is that things move in like molecules need to go in and when they go in without energy that's called diffusion. You notice it's from there's a lot of molecules out here that's high concentration there's a little bit inside and so they freely move from high to low and that's just spontaneous without energy that's going to be passive. Uh, sometimes we need to force things in and so we need some energy to do that so we use ATP. For example there might not be that much food molecules outside but the cell's really hungry and there's a lot already inside so we force it in again that's different that's from low to high that's the opposite way so that requires energy another thing is that the cell also uh, communicates and so there's there's ways cell communi communicates uh, through hormones and so the cell does that it allows them to communicate also uh, some things that a cell won't allow in are like bacteria and other substances so it's a barrier. You, there's some things you don't want getting in at all, like bacteria. Cell membrane, again, is as a barrier. Here you have the phospholipid bilayer. This is what the barrier is. It blocks some things. But there are some things that can go in. You see mo small molecules like water, um, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. They can get in and out. They could just kind of wiggle, the wiggle their way through the phospholipids. Um, so small things that are uncharged, that means no charge. They can go in and out as they please. Uh, but then you see some molecules, even though they're small, they're charged like ions, and they'll, they'll just bounce right off. They can't get in, or these can't get out. Um, that's why we need some special proteins to help those, like ion channels where they will go through. Um, bigger molecules, and here we have like a big protein, they can't just go in through the, through the layer. Um, they need some other help, maybe like endocytosis or exocytosis with the use of energy. Let's do a check for understanding. What are the four functions of the cell membrane? Think about that. Um, how does it keep homeostasis? What are the two types of transport? What is another word for cell membrane? What molecules can easily enter? Which ones need assistance? Okay, the structure of the cell membrane. Here you have your lipid bilayer. And remember, we have phospholipids. They have a hydrophilic head that loves water, hydrophobic that doesn't. Um, you have ion channels, some proteins that allow charged molecules in, plus or negative. Uh, if they're not the right size, they can't go in. Um, you're going to see we have membrane pumps. They, use, they are carrier proteins that use ATP to move molecules in and out. This one's called the sodium potassium pump, a very important one that keeps our cells balanced with ions making sure that the water level inside is controlled properly and they use sodium and potassium here's another type this is called a carrier protein um, this is used in facilitated diffusion that you're going to see later on it binds a molecule changes a little bit and allows things in this is a receptor protein you don't have to worry about this one but these are important when the messenger or hormone um, lands on it, like you can see, then it allows other substances to enter. So there you, there you go. It's also called the 
fluid mosaic model because you notice that the proteins can move through it and move in a very fluid-like way. So you had the, col the cholesterol molecules that keep it from um, becoming unstable. You have carbohydrate chains. They help the cells connect to each other and form tissues. You have surface protein markers that are like ID tags for the cell so the immune system doesn't destroy it. And sometimes you have to make big uh, you have to move big molecules like proteins in and out. So we use a process of endocytosis for them to enter in. And that's when the substance um, gets in and the cell membrane kind of pinches in and brings it in. Let's do a check for understanding. What do you think the following are? So pause the video right now and test your skills. Now we continue. So A again is a cholesterol molecule right here. It allows for stability. B is a carrier protein. It allows substances to go in and out. C is the phospholipid bilayer. And that's the barrier that prevents some things from going in. And only the small and charged to go in. D, again, this whole, cell, this whole area is the cell membrane. Controls what goes in and out. And then E, these are carbohydrates. Um, they connect the cells. Now we have types of transport. You want to use this one for your drawing. Uh, let's take a look here. So everything to the left um, of the dotted line is passive transport. That means no energy or no ATP required. Everything to, to the right is active transport. So going back to the left, passive transport, no energy necessary. You're going to see this word a lot, diffusion. Anytime you see that word diffusion, that means passive transport, no energy is uh, required. We're going to start with the first one. This one we call simple diffusion because if you notice, the molecules that are small and uncharged can go easily in and out without any help. So we call that simple diffusion. You also see we have ion channels. And ion channels, again, they're proteins that allow uh, charged molecules to go in or ch charged ions like chlorine, potassium. So that's how they get in and out. Then you have osmosis, which is just water going in and out. So it's like simple diffusion, but it's a little bit more special because we're talking about water here, a substance that's very important to our survival. So we call it osmosis, in and out. And then you have um, facilitated diffusion. This is when you have bigger molecules like glucose and amino acids that have to go in and out. And it's really cool because when it attaches here, um, the molecule will kind of um, uh, do a confirmation and it'll actually turn and fold and bring the substance in. So it helps it in and makes it easy. Makes it, uh, like in Spanish, facile, makes it easier, facilitated diffusion. And then everything to the right, we have uh, active transport where we need ATP. For example, sometimes you have to pump in molecules from a low to high concentration. And those are called protein pumps. And that uses ATP to pump them from low to high. Sometimes you're bringing in something really, really big and you need to use endocytosis. And that is, um, as you saw in the video. Or if you have to take something really big, a protein, and you have to take it out of the cell, you, you do the opposite. It's called exocytosis. Check for understanding. So again, what are the four types of passive transport and what does each carry? What are the three types of active transport and what does each carry?